Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special lunchtime edition of Marketo Foo. Uh, my name is Joe Wrights, and today what we're going to be covering is Marketo segmentations and how to use those segmentations to create dynamic emails. So allow me to share my screen real quick, and we will dive in. I choose a screen. Okay. So I'm over in the Marketo sandbox, and I'm going to minimize that. So the first place you start to create a segmentation in Marketo is not actually in marketing activities where you build most of your stuff, but over in the lead database, or uh, if you have a newer instance, just database. So if I go over here, uh, I've already got one created, but basically you'll see the, the normal folder structure is you'll have uh, your system smart list, group smart list, group list, and then a folder created by the system called segmentations. Now, if I right click that folder, I can create a new segmentation and begin creating one. Uh, but before we get into this, uh, basically one of the um, one of the primary things about segmentations in Marketo that a lot of people don't understand necessarily is that a segmentation in Marketo is basically a series of cascading smart lists. Is how I like to think about it. Uh, if you what I've what I've noticed working with people from other marketing automation backgrounds is that people tend to think a segmentation simply means targeting. And that's not 100% wrong, but it's not 100% right in terms of how Marketo uses segmentations uh, either. So uh, with that bit aside, let's go back to the screen share. And basically, whoops. All right, so basically, when you, when you go to create a new segmentation, you can name it whatever you want. Some common ones that I see, I've seen across a variety of clients and, uh, and that I use regularly are things like, um, uh, language, like for localization, what language should an email be in, or like use case. So let's say we had one for use case, and uh, the the thing with how segmentations work is you can add segments. So we could say, um, all right, let's just do a, a segmentation, simple one for customer versus prospect. Okay, so segment one could be customers, and segment two is everyone else. So Basically, the way segmentations work is they'll look at whatever smart list you identify and then try to slot people into the first one they qualify for. And if you have a long list of these, uh, I think you can have some ridiculous number like, well, I actually can't recall off the top of my head. I, I've seen some with as many as 20 uh, segmentations in here. It, Marketo will try to put people into one, two, three, four. If they don't qualify for any, they end up in default. So in this scenario, if I go ahead and create this, what I would have is a segmentation for customers. And you'll notice when I click on this, I see customers and default. And I haven't activated this, so there's nothing in it. But if I click on customers, what I could do, what I get taken to is a smart list. And then I just say um, whatever smart list criteria I have in my instance of Marketo to say, are they a customer or not? So this could be true. I could look at who this qualifies in the database. Now, there's no uh, customers in the sandbox, obviously. So all they would do from here is go ahead and approve it. And basically, every, anybody that has is customer set to false then is going to end up in the default bucket. So that aside, I've already, I've already created a language preference. And you can see that there's multiple languages here. So I just did some simple ones, and I assigned some, some dummy leads to different segmentations. But basically, we could have some, some of our uh, leads we've identified as Japanese speaking, Spanish speaking, Italian, Chinese, Chinese simplified, or we don't know. So uh, in, in most cases, what I see the, the default being used for is English. But, um, but just, to, just to kind of put this into practice, so that's how you build a segmentation. Each one of these individual segments within the segmentation has various smart list criteria. So in this case, if we're assuming if they're in the country of Italy, uh, they, they probably speak Italian. Now, that's just for the sake of showing you the smart list, you probably want to have more uh, more rigid a more rigid strategy than that, because uh, especially when it comes to Europe, just because you live in a country like Germany doesn't mean you speak you prefer to speak German. There's a lot of French or Spanish people, uh, etc. So, uh, but be that as it may, you can see that each of these are their own smart list, and then the way Marketo is going to sort people into them is by looking at whatever you set up the smart list to be. This is the order it's going to run through. It's going to see if they're Japanese first, then Spanish, then Italian, Chinese traditional, Chinese simplified. And if it doesn't qualify for any of these, if a record doesn't qualify, they end up in the default bucket. So in our use case here, we're going to assume that's English. So to let that let the rubber meet the road a little bit, we're going to go over to marking activities. And I've already got an exercise um, pretty much dialed in where I'm just going to show you how to use those segmentations in an email. 
So I've got the email uh, all built. So uh, again, uh, you guys remember Tango. And uh, basically what we can do here is we can, we can right click on any section of the email and make it dynamic. So this little button here that says make dynamic, if I do that, I can say any approved segmentation I have and you'll see the different segments that are within that segmentation. So I'll go ahead and click save. And I can do, you have to do this for each individual module that you're using in your email, which is a little wonky, but um, just important to remember. So let's just use those three for now. And if I go over here to the dynamic uh, sidebar, I, I can see that when I select one of these, I have different options. So by default, I'm in the default editing these, so English. Uh, let's, uh, let's try our hand at, uh, at Spanish where if I were to double click on the segmentation here, I could double click into these to edit the Spanish version. Um, I wish I knew how to say main section in Spanish. Um, close enough, right? All right, so, so we have a Spanish version. Uh, we could replace this text with, uh, you know, cool. And then uh, for this, we could do, uh, and you'll excuse my lack of accent marks. So if I if I then toggle back to any of the other versions, I can toggle back to default, and I get default. The cool thing about using a, a dynamic email like this, and if I toggle back to Spanish, you see it switches to whatever Spanish I put in. Uh, if I were to try Japanese, um, I'm not even going to say Japanese text here. And I could say something, something in Japanese here, where it's uh, I don't know. Fun fact: Ohio gozaimasu is how you say good morning in Japanese. Uh, but you get the point. So I can toggle between these, and the Marketo knows based on which segmentation someone's in, which version of this email to send them. So when I go to actually schedule this, I can just send one email. I don't need any additional steps in my or choices in my flow step for. Uh, you know, if they're in this segment, send this this version. If they're in that segment, send this one. Marketo just knows it automatically, and that's the beauty of doing dynamic segments and or doing segmentation and using them in a in a dynamic email. Okay, that was a lot of words. Um, let me find my screen share. So that, in a nutshell, is how you use how you create a, a segmentation in Marketo, and then how you can use it in an email to drive dynamic content. So. Uh, language is probably the most common, and there are services out there, um, CloudWords is one of them, where there's an integration with Marketo already, and they can automatically localize it for you and just have those different localized versions dropped into your segmented emails. Uh, that said, if you're a little bit smaller of an operation and you're just translating to one or two languages and you can do it manually or you have you know someone on your team that can do it, this is a very easy way to use one email have less assets to track, cleans up your reporting, just simplifies your life from a operation standpoint, and really just gets you off to the races quickly just to show the value of the platform and what, what Marketo can do very intelligently without you having to remember and, and follow a lot of uh, extra process. So this has been episode 37 of Marketo Foo, and uh, I've been Joe Wrights, and uh, please, in the comments on LinkedIn, anywhere, please let me know what else uh, would be helpful for you to see or, or learn more about, and we'll we'll take it from there. Thanks.